moisture release curves. Now, that's something that I don't think a lot of my audience is really aware of. So talk to us all about moisture release curves. A moisture release curve is a, is a graph, the chart. And it's got uh, your X and Y uh, axes, right? So a vertical and a horizontal axis. And the vertical axis is often represented uh, by a volumetric water content. So um, let me just jump into this point. There's, there's, there's two main ways to measure soil moisture. And the first is through VWC, volumetric water content, so your VWC. And the, the second is uh, soil moisture tension. So these are, are two different uh, data points that you can pull out of any uh, soil solution, and they're going to give you different numbers and different in different uh, units of measurement. So volumetric water content is is the percentage of water that is that this is made up of the soil. So um, you know maybe it's fifty percent, right? So a soil a soil solution might be fifty percent water or forty percent water or thirty percent water. So by volume, it's the 30% water. And there's a lot of really cool data that you can pull out of that and strategy that can be developed based on that, that information. Um, the second way to measure uh, soil moisture is, is through tensiometers. And tensiometers are devices that measure pressure. So what those devices usually look like, well, honestly, they look a lot like the blue mats do. It, it's a it's a ceramic tip, uh, like a ceramic cone with a with a tube on top of it, and then uh, attached to that is some sort of uh, pressure gauge. So, as the uh, soil dries out, it it creates a negative pressure inside uh, that tube, and that so and then that uh, negative pressure is expressed as a vacuum. So uh, it'll it'll read in units of pressure and. Um, it's often measured in centibars or millibars, uh, which is uh, uh, just as little uh, something to note. One bar is is equal to one atmosphere of pressure or 15 psi, and it's really it's like the metric uh, style of of measuring pressure. So we use the psi and and um, uh, standard measurements, but then in uh, in metric it's it's in bars. So a millibar is one thousandth of a bar, or a centibar is one hundredth of a bar. So these are these units of pressure that are measured, and most most of those tensiometers either measure in centibars or millibars. So if we jump back to the moisture release curve itself, uh, we have that vertical axis that's measuring uh, percentage, and we're having the uh, the horizontal axis, which is which is measuring uh, millibars. And what we see is a, a, a there's a graph that gets expressed on this, and that's that. This it's a curve, and it starts high on the on the on the vertical axis, and then it will uh, be steady for a little bit. So that's that that indicates a really high percentage of water, and when it's it'll be flat for a little bit, and that's a, a that'll translate to a low uh, tensiometer number, and when it's flat at the top, that that indicates a full saturation. So you're you're at a point of, of runoff. Um, so if any more water was added, it would immediately run off out of the pot. And then that curve, uh, it's flat for a little bit, and then it, it falls off precipitously and plunges down. And that's, that's the soil drying out. So as the uh, percentage of water drops, um, the, uh, the tension, the soil moisture tension starts to grow. And uh, it drops off pretty steeply, and then it starts to kind of ease that curve off. and um, so you get this kind of nice rounded piece of the graph, and then it flattens out. And that when it flattens out again, very low on the on the graph, uh, that's that's your permanent wilt point. So the soil is is has dried out. There's no more moisture left in it. And each uh, soil medium out there has a unique uh, uh, moisture release curve. So it's like a it's almost like a, a fingerprint for each soil it has its own particular moisture moisture release curve. And there are methods for determining what a, you know, a custom blend might be. Specifically, a lot of uh, major manufacturers of soil have that data that you can get. Um, there's also some pretty clear, uh, it, there's, it's pretty standard for certain soil types. So they'll measure it in like, you know, sandy loam soils or uh, like bark they usually use as one of the controls. 
like pine bark, um, but then cocoa or peat or engineered potting soil blends that use organic material, which would kind of be like a living soil mix, something that has perlite and either peat or cocoa and compost in it. Um, and they all kind of have different shaped curves and they, they dry out in different ways. Um, and why this data is really interesting is you can determine the moisture release curve of a particular soil uh, medium or soil composition and, and then find that chart and then understand what is the best, what are the targets that we want to hit for irrigating that particular soil. So when do we want to start an irrigation event? Um, and, and then we, when do we want to stop it? So if we say we, uh, we irrigate a, like a, uh, like a cocoa based soil, um, you know, it's going to start at one point. It's, it's, we're going to, the irrigation's going to turn off. It's going to be high up on the percentage and low on the tension. And then it's going to start to dry out and it's going to dry out and it's going to dry out. And it's going to get down to a point, um, that's, that's approaching, uh, the, the wilt point, which we don't ever want to hit. And then when there's a, there's a point on that curve where we can kind of identify it very specifically. And we can say that's our trigger point for another irrigation event. And that's going to, then it's going to go back to the top of that curve and go back down again. So, um, we're keeping, we're keeping the moisture level, uh, in a, within a window where it is plant available. And because we don't want to oversaturate it because then it's not going to be plant available. and It's going to do harm to the, to the, to the plant itself. And we don't want to dry it out too much, uh, because again, we're going to do harm and damage to the plant. Um, there's some other factors to, to look at too, which is the nutrient content in the, you know, your EC in the soil. Um, as the percentage of water drops, your EC increases. And that's because, uh, as the, as the percentage of water drops, the, the concentration just becomes greater of whatever nutrients in there. So if you took, I don't know, you would like have a pot of coffee like on the burner and it cooks down and it cooks down and eventually it would turn into like kind of a sludge, right? Because we've removed the water, but there's still material in there. That's the same kind of concept with, with drying it out. And a lot of what like crop steering, so that's a term that gets thrown around a lot and in different ways. What that is, is cycling plants uh, back and forth on that moisture release curve. And drying them out to a point where the plant is still uptaking water, it's still nutrient available, so it's still, still plant available, the water content in the soil. Um, but the nutrient level is very high, so it's able to uptake a lot of nutrients. And then taking it right down to a point before it's starting to damage the plant and then introducing another irrigation event and uh, kind of repeating that process. So it's this kind of pulsing cycle that, you know, looked at over time is up and down and up and down. And so it's dry, wet, dry, wet, but within a very sp specific um, band of, of measurement. So, you know, if you're measuring intensiometers and you're using uh, millibars to measure that, something like a, like a cocoa has a pretty, pretty large window, you know, you might be able to start um, irrigating when it, when, it, uh, when it dries down to 70 millibars. And then you want to irrigate back until it hits about 10 millibars, which is very wet, and then let it dry back down to 70. Um, you know, more of like a, like a peat-based living soil kind of thing. You're going to you're going to start uh, uh, irrigating around 100, 100, between 100 and 120, depending on the composition, and and water it down to like 40 or 50 millibars, and then repeat that process. And yeah, there's some really cool stuff that happens in there to the plant. Um, you get these generative cues that are introduced to the plant when you when you cycle it through that dryback phase. So it's you know the, one of the other terms get thrown around a lot is like drybacks. Do you, what's your dryback? Are you doing this and and what we're looking at is is running the soil down that uh, moisture release curve, um, and and drying it out. And why do we do that? Well, we don't want to dry it out to a point of, of wilt. That stresses the plant. It's going to be permanent damage. It's going to impact yield. It's going to impact vigor. It's going to you know all that, all that stuff. But by by drying it back to just the, before the point where we're hitting that, we're introducing the concept of stress. We're not actually stressing the plant like on a real level, 
but we're letting the plant know and you know we're going to anthrop uh, anthropomorph uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn the plant into a person here for a second and uh you know we're introducing that concept of stress and um when we do that it it's 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 kind of reminding the plant that hey there's a there's a <laughs> you know there's a there's an end to this there's impermanence that does exist and um it uh it, it'll it'll can trigger you know doing it within certain windows like having a longer dryback period will help induce flowering in a plant keeping it in a narrow wetter band will will keep a plant in a vegetative state longer but by drying it back a little bit more um we're going to see a um, we're giving it we're giving it a generative cue so we're, we're telling the plant hey it's time to start the second half of your life cycle it's time to start producing flowers um and to and to start uh fruit set so there's again there's things with moisture levels that can be um, can be done to manipulate um, those functions in the plant. Uh, <laughs> I know that's a lot, and there's a lot you can kind of take each one of those little places there and jump off and talk more about it and talk about specific strategy that's that's species specific or strain specific even. Um, but that's the general concept of a moisture release curve. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code Mr. Grow at 15 to save on any of their products.